What's going on, Hokie Nation? Welcome into this week's Triumph Spotlight here on TSL Today. Our guest today is the number one freshman in the country in the 400 meter, Virginia Tech sprinter Judson Lincoln IV. Judson had a great freshman campaign in the indoor and continues his successes this spring outdoors. Guys, get this. He's the number one under 20 400 meter sprinter in the world. Judson Lincoln coming up next on this week's Triumph Spotlight. Today's show is brought to you by Triumph NIL. Recognized by On3 Sports as a top 20 most ambitious NIL franchise, Triumph develops custom partnerships for collegiate student athletes with members of the business community, supporters, and fans. Log on to triumphnil.com for more information on how to engage and support Virginia Tech student athletes through NIL platforms. All right, let's introduce our uh, crew on set today. To my right, Nick Brown. Across the way, of course, Judson Lincoln. I'm your host, Giovanni Heater. Guys, looking forward to a great show. Judson, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. Well, uh, we'll start out, kind of ease into things a little bit. How was your first year at Virginia Tech so far up to this point? How's everything treating you? It's going well. Uh, the school is treating me right. They believed in me before I got here, and they're showing me love when I'm down here now, so <laughs> it's going well so far. What brought you to Virginia Tech? I know you're a Maryland guy, so is it proximity, or, or what was it really drew you to the maroon and orange? Well, my dad coached track um, with another guy, like his assistant coach. Um, he went to VT and ran here, and okay. his basement is full. Of, it looks like this, kind of. <laughs> um, so I thought it would be a good idea to email VT and see if they respond, and they did, and I was down here like the next couple of days after that. Uh, they gave me a good offer. Uh, for the time being, it was like my first Power Five offer at the time, and then I committed two days later, I think. So, yeah, not many people know what the recruiting process is like for track and field. Can you kind of explain on that? Because that's definitely not like football, basketball, right. or baseball. Uh, so I was playing basketball my junior year, mm -hmm. and I was running track also, and I kind of had to make a decision. And what it came down to was basketball is more political like you need to be in front of the right people with the right people and obviously like play well at the right time but track if I'm running 46 in the 400 there's no like oh my son's better because he runs a 48 yeah <laughs> you can't it's lie like, yeah the numbers don't <laughs> lie so it's a little bit more you can see the times and you'll know like if you're good or not Interesting. So as a team, you guys won the ACC indoor championships. What is that experience like? That was a roller coaster. One, because like we won as a team, but individually, I think I performed pretty badly. I came in first for the 400 and I was 10th in the nation at the time. And then I ended up getting fourth and then I didn't make nationals, which is like top 16 in the nation. Yeah. And I was 20th. And it was just kind of like a roller coaster. And then the four by four, my teammate tore his Achilles mm. and we weren't able to finish the four by four. So it was kind of like individually, it was pretty bad. But for the team, like I was happy for everybody and getting the first team win under our belt was it was good. What's the biggest transition going from high school to college? I mean, you're still just running at the at the end of it. Right. But uh, what's the biggest transition for you and what was the hardest thing for you? to? Well, coming into college I think my big focus was to just stay focused one and then like you don't want to fall off because a lot of people that come to college with doing great in high school breaking all these records but then once they get to college they might not ever like PR again or run as fast as they did so I think that was a big thing just kind of stay focused so I can improve and it becomes more of like a job like in high school you go to practice after school and yeah. then wake up the next day, kind of do it again. But here, like you're practicing, you're lifting with the team, uh, you're traveling on a Tuesday to go wherever you're going. So it's just come more of a full-time job. You know, what was it been like to compete at the ACC level and what maybe surprised you the most? Uh, obviously the jump in competition level. So I think my junior year, I was, I was okay. Like I ran 48. 
Um, but later my senior year, I ran 46. So I went to all these good national meets and I raced against some pretty good competition. But coming into college, it's more of like everybody is like as good as you and maybe better. Um, ACC's kind of proved that. I wasn't like taking anything lightly, but it kind of shows that like you have to really be on your A game before every race. And if not, then it'll show at the end of it. Anything in particular this season that maybe challenged you in a way you didn't expect? That's a good question. I'd say definitely one getting used to like actually seeing people you've been watching on TV for a while. I think mm -hmm. I ran at Clemson and I was running the 400, but the guy outside of me was Elijah Godwin and he ran at the Olympics, one for the four by four, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then won the four by four for the world championships and then ended up winning the 400 for the NCAAs for indoor this year. But it was kind of like surreal to race against him, but then also having a whole bunch of other people at that meet too. Um, so that was kind of what I had to get used to. So you got the spring season coming up outdoors. Uh, again, it's different from other sports where it's almost year round for you guys. Yeah. What's the transition like coming from indoor to outdoor and how hard is it being a year round sport? So the big transition is, I don't know if you guys know, but indoor it's 200 meter track and then it's bank. So it's like yeah. kind of like a NASCAR track. Yeah, yeah. So um, one, you have to get used to that and it's kind of a different race because it's more you can bump around a little bit indoor, but um, outdoor you're in your own lane and you kind of have to get used to not as tight turns. Um, but a big thing for me is like, I just want to stay focused all year round from fall training, just kind of focus on the main goal, getting to nationals, getting to a national final um, from indoor to outdoor and hopefully making it to world trials in the summer. So where are the expectations at and what excites you about not only the rest of the spring, but also going into your first off season uh, as a collegiate student athlete to maybe take what, you know, you applied in your freshman year and um, kind of build off of it heading into what would be your sophomore campaign? Um, well, I definitely want to win ACC's for the outdoor season and I'll have a chance to win some relays as well. I should be on the four by one and the four by four. So I definitely want to win those, make it to nationals and hopefully place in the 400, that's a big goal. And then if I run fast enough, make it to world trials and maybe see if I can make a world team. Um, but once that's all over with, uh, I'm ready to rest a little bit. Cause <laughs> yeah. like, like you said, it's, it's like a year round sport basically. I was gonna follow up with that. What are you uh, planning to do in the off season? Um, go to the beach. There you go. Nice. <laughs> what beach? Uh, Bethany. Okay. And, Delaware yeah but I'll maybe Virginia Beach I don't know I'll just go on some road trips that's that's the plan for now gotcha there what's go. training like in the off season for you guys too um for us it's more of like conditioning so like a workout we did was like we ran 450 meters mm -hmm. and then 90 seconds then you would do like some type of plyometric so like you do like yeah. burpees for 30 seconds and you get 30 seconds of rest and like do squats for 30 seconds and then do a 450 again do that like four times so it's just kind of getting into shape for the fall nick you got any more uh track based questions before we kind of turn <laughs> over to more you know personal hobby type stuff well i guess for fans what would be the biggest draw for fans to come out uh to you guys events and uh how would you i guess pitch it to them I think when people come to like a track meet, they have a lot of things they can watch. And I think that's what makes it kind of interesting. Mm. Um, like when you're running the 400, that might be going on. But at the same time, you got triple jump going mm -hmm. or you might have pole vault or if you want to watch the throws. And I think that's what kind of makes it interesting at least to me so. so i heard that they kind of always ended off with the with a bang right they kind of save all the exciting stuff for the end what are your thoughts on that and how how they kind of schedule out a track meet well i think the four by four being the last event usually for every meet that's pretty fun because i think at, at um clemson the clemson invite for indoors like they had loud music everybody was like super like <laughs> excited to watch the four by fours it was a great race 
Um, but I think the better races being at the end is like how it should be, and the four by four is like one of the best races to watch. Well, you're just saying that because you're in the four by four. Well, of course, <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> and then again, uh, just lastly, uh, tell everybody what events you do and what you are planning to do in the future. Um, I do the 200 and the 400, but my better events the 400. Um, I did the 100 in high school, but it's kind of a that's fun to watch. Yeah, it's a different world when you come to college because you need to run like 10 three at least to be okay <laughs> holy cow and i ran 10 four six so that's just not my thing i, don't have, I need <laughs> to get cooking. going a little bit so interesting all right well uh, let's kind of lighten it up and uh, talk some things off the track what do you like to do in your off time um i'm kind of a mellow guy so like i mean i'll play video games with my friends i'll hang out with my friends or i mean i'll be working out regardless so that's like my favorite thing to do i think this summer i might try to venture out and do some things i haven't done mm -hmm. uh like maybe i want to do fishing maybe but just okay. like okay i've got you right there <laughs> so like just some stuff i haven't done before interesting what what type of fishing do you want to do saltwater freshwater anything okay saltwater okay. is cool <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fish guy but <laughs> we'll, start, we'll start you out the duck pond and then we'll work way okay, work our way fine. up there that that's sounds fine. good yeah <laughs> if you ever want to golf too yeah, yeah, golf, yeah, golfing guys. too because i was watching the masters so yeah. i was like i want to get in that yeah but. there's a new show out on uh netflix called full swing yeah I, like, i've seen yeah i heard that's gotten a lot of people into golf yeah. so i started watching it i mean i already liked golf and golf and watched golf but yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> so check out full swing yeah yeah all right well uh what is your what is your go-to kind of pre-game meal so for me I am like really nervous before a race mm -hmm. so I usually try not to eat that much but in the morning I'll try to eat some some fruit or like a muffin or something and then like I'll eat like a little bit of a sandwich like a couple hours before but I usually can't eat too much before a race. What has this journey with Triumph NIL been like for you um, up to this point um, in your young career? So before I got here, I was kind of looking at it, but I knew I kind of had to prove myself in college. I got to wear the uniform and kind of get my name established. And once I was starting to do a little bit better, um, I reached out to them, and I thought it would be a good idea to – team up with them because get my name out here like um locally and like i think i wouldn't have got this chance to be on here if it wasn't for triumph olympic nil it's well nil's really helped olympic athletes i think more than a lot of people realize what is it like in the track and field world well one you have to be good so i'm, I'm getting <laughs> there but um so like once you do good you get the followers and i think followers is a big part of getting the nils as well but i try to reach out to brands and i know me like i i think i have a pretty bright future so i'll try to reach out to them after a good race and whatnot so i think just like i'm trying to stay on top of things so i can get my nils and stuff like that um in college so that's that's the plan so here's kind of your pitch opportunity you know what other nil avenues would you like to explore whether that be um you know different local charities or a certain restaurant in blacksburg that you love eating at and you'd love to sponsor them or you know for track certain gear and uh and shoes running shoes and things like that spikes well for track i definitely want an oakley deal because yeah. i'll wear sunglasses when i run okay so i love oakley um and then locally i I want to say like Sweet Frog because I'll Yay, go, I'll go there every now and then. Okay. So that's like the main two. Sweet. There used to be three Sweet Frogs in Blacksburg, really? actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> About two or three years ago, there used to be three. Well, actually, it was before COVID and then COVID shut right, a lot of yeah. them down. But yeah, yeah, that was a big deal back then. So let's uh, do some whip around questions here. Who are the best athletes on a track and field team? And that's any event. Positionally. So I'd say like one would have to be a decathlete oh yeah so you do yeah. every sport so you got to be pretty athletic <laughs> to do that and then i would say probably like a high jumper because like they can jump seven foot over a bar and then like you know ej so yeah you can no dunk real pretty, personally yeah <laughs> you can dunk pretty easily so i'd probably say those two and then maybe a sprinter because 
usually they just have like a pretty athletic build for the most part. Okay. So. Okay. So why were the best athletes, who were, who were some of the best athletes that you were uh, able to run against both here at Tech in the ACC, but in your time before college as well? I raced Arian Knighton in high school before he went pro. And now he got third for the 200 meters at the Worlds. And he's run 19.4 in the 200 meters. And he's breaking all of Usain Bolt's records at his age. Wow. So he's like supposed to be the next guy. Um, Will Sumner, who runs at Georgia, he ran 45 in high school, went 146 in the 800. And then Kay Flat, who's a good friend of mine, he goes to Ole Miss and he ran 146 like 10 times. He's probably one of the best high school runners ever. So I'll probably say those three. Let's do two questions here in one question. If you could do a field event, what would it be? Okay. And then if you could play another sport at Virginia Tech, what would it be? Okay. Um, if I could do a different event or a field event, you said. Yeah, a field, so field event. event. Yeah. I would probably do triple jump. Okay. Because I think it looks kind of cool if you've ever seen it. So it's yeah. like, I just think the form looks nice. So I'd probably do that. <laughs> and then a different sport. It's either football or basketball. Well, what position in football then? Receiver. Okay. okay. What position I say in basketball? But um, basketball, I'd definitely be a shooting guard. Okay. Because I think I can shoot pretty well. <laughs> okay. But I definitely want to. Um, I texted Coach Pry like as a joke <laughs> that I want to um, be like a kick returner. So. <laughs> did, he, did he answer it? No, he didn't. But, <laughs> but uh, I would definitely want to do that. That's awesome. If I could get the chance. That would be really cool to see. I think. Or I if think I could like run a 40 at the pro day or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cook people yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, oh, go ahead. You, you got, got it. it. All right. So what would your pregame playlist uh, or pre-match, sorry, uh, playlist consist of right there? Gearing up for a match. You want like three people? For me. Yeah. Give us. Give us your top three artists on your on your playlist. To listen to before a race, I'd listen to probably like Yeet. I don't know if you know who Yeet is. I gotta say no. I don't know. Oh, okay, Yeet. Um, who else is in there? Maybe like Lil Baby. Mm. And there's somebody I'm missing. Then I'll, my friend Malik the Prince, you, you have to listen to him. Malik he's, the Prince? Yeah, yeah. He's okay. A, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he has some pretty good music, but I'll listen to them before a race. Is that on Spotify? And yeah, Apple? it's on okay, Spotify. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll give him a listen after yeah. that. It's but I'll, like my regular people I listen to is like kind of more mellow. Okay. So, yeah. Well, then who, who are they? Uh, well, Travis Scott, he's not super mellow. He's got some songs. Yeah. And then Don <laughs> Tolliver um, and then Frank Ocean. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Frank That's Ocean. mellow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, what's your go-to hangout spot in Blacksburg? Um, it's kind of a boring answer, but like my dorm, <laughs> like, okay. I'm usually just like in my dorm or at the track. Like I usually don't like get out of my dorm. I'll just be playing video games. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Nick, anything else for you? Yeah. So with people getting into running or racing and well, especially since the 3.2 for 32 is coming up this Saturday, uh, in Blacksburg, there's not a lot of people there that are regular runners that run in that race. What would be some advice to people that are going to run a 5K that haven't typically ran recently or still just trying to get into the running world? Um, well, for more of like distance, I think it's you just got to get like one of the right shoes, obviously. And I think like you kind of have to build yourself up even for track. But like if you want to run miles and stuff, you like start with one like for one week and like kind of build up slowly. Uh, but for sprinting, it's kind of more, you kind of have to figure out the workout, mm -hmm. especially if you're like you're a short sprinter or a long sprinter. Um, and everything has to be in moderation. Like if I'm doing uh, four, four hundreds one day, I can't do that again the next day. I have to like yeah. take the load down a little bit. So it's kind of have to figure that out. Okay. But just like, Build up slowly is the big thing. Yeah. Last but not least, how do you want to be remembered at Virginia Tech? Um, I'd say I'd want to be remembered as a champion. I'm definitely 
a big goal of mine because we haven't won a national championship as a team for any sport. Yeah. Is one bring in like some good people and kind of compete nationally for a national championship as a team. But also, I want to break every record uh, for the school here and win multiple national championships. So, like, be remembered as a champion. Judson, thank you so much for your time, man. Yeah. It was a fun one. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right. For Nick Brown, for Judson Lincoln, for Will Stewart, uh, behind the scenes producing, I'm Giovanni Heater. We'll see you on our next Triumph Spotlight right here at TSL.